we are almost there in the break. So I'm Barbara Pedo. I'm a part-time PhD student at the University of Huddersfield, UK, but I'm also a Linear Efficiency Manager at Arcadis. And today I'll be presenting the paper titled BIM and GIS Integration, Lessons Learned from Multiple Case Study, on behalf of the other co-authors from the University of Huddersfield, but also from the University of Nottingham, Arcadis, and ESRI. So I'm not going into the details of the definition because I'm pretty sure we all know what it is, so I'm not covering that, but I brought that because I would like to mention that these are two key concepts for the digital built environment vision. They provide digital representations and they are complementary, but they also have different focus and purpose, like BIM is focused on the built assets uh, and also in the internal components, while your GIS is focused on the location-specific geospatial features surrounding that built asset. Uh, and the combined use of BIM and GIS, which is also called GeoBIM, provides integrated data for the assets and the, the environment itself. However, despite all of that, we still have a gap, and this is what we use for this uh, paper and this case study. So there is a lack of research in this uh, micro level, in the technical integration, but also, and most important, in the macro level, considering process, management, commercial, and organizational dynamics. So the objective of this paper is to present findings, including challenges, lessons learned and benefits from a BIM and GIS integration effort in a multinational design and consultancy company over multiple projects. So if we go back to the literature, we found that there are three main uh, modes of integration of BIM and GIS in integration in practice based on the different domain positions they have, it's starting with the first one, the BIM leads and the GIS supports. So basically in that one, a particular asset is in the focus. We have the second one where uh, GIS leads and BIM supports. So geospatial analysis and modeling are in the focus. And the third one, but not le uh, also important, uh, both BIM and GIS are equally involved. In that situation, we would have a balanced uh, combination of information uh, from the built asset and the environment. And in that case, we would have more complete data, but also it would increase the processing needs. Uh, the complexity in the integration is mostly related to the dissimilarities between them, and these could create lots of challenges. Uh, it could be related to the different users, different application focus, development stages, coordinate systems, semantic and geometric representations, information storage, and so on. Uh, with that in mind, I will uh, briefly explain the research method that we adopt, and then I will show a bit of the case studies. So, yeah, as I already mentioned, we use a case study as the method, method uh, approach. Uh, sorry, not working. Uh, the context, as I mentioned, international design and consultancy company, but it's also worth mentioning that this was carried out through a knowledge transfer partnership project which is basically a type of research program in the UK that link, links business with um, uh, ac uh, academic institutions. In that case, it was connected with the University of Huddersfield, and the aim of that KTP, or Knowledge Transfer Partnership, was to uh, investigate the synergies between link construction and digital process. And this was one of the short case studies that we developed. It, was, it basically consisted of, uh, in the development and critical analysis of ESRIs, ArcGIS GeoBeam platform, which was quite new at that point when we did the case studies, and we were not pretty sure about the benefits and the challenges of that. Uh, and the idea was to create a live connection between Beam and GIS data and uh, support and easier integration. Oh, we are back working with this. <laughs> so what is the ArcGIS GeoBeam then? You can see in the background a, a quick video showing you the interface, but it's a web based platform for collaboration, which enable, uh, allow different types and source of uh, information and data system to be used in a geospatial environment. And the teams can work with linked data documentation in this web app. So this investigation was limited to five case projects. 
the projects were basically selected um, uh, by the, steer the company steering group. They identified the business areas and the project type that uh, we would be analyzing. And you can see that we analyzed the uh, water project, radio environmental building. And uh, we also identified projects in different locations. So we had one case study in the UK, Belgium, US, uh, Netherlands and Australia. Uh, also, I brought here the main roles involved in the implementation. I'm not going through all of them, but just to show you and give you an idea of the number of stakeholders involved in that. So it was a big uh, case study with lots of experts involved as well and helping us in this improvement. It was basically divided into four main uh, steps uh, about the implementation of the platform itself within the projects, and that was very uh, dynamic and iterative with the lessons learned. So basically we uh, developed the lessons learned and process modeling with cases A, B, and C. After that, we, have, we had a final workshop with all the projects involved. It was virtual, unfortunately, but uh, the best way to approach it and the dissemination of a through a guidance document that we developed. And this was carried out uh, through approximately, approximately, sorry, <laughs> six months. So very quickly about uh, the source of evidence, we had the case study meetings uh, for the implementation. We had the continuous improvement meetings where we were capturing the process they were going through, but also capturing lessons learned and already transferring the lessons learned between the, the projects. Kickoff and final workshop, uh, initial lessons learned, challenges, and benefits collected through a survey, and the final uh, guidance and lessons learned document. So talking about the RGIS job in process, uh, uh, through the process mapping exercise, we were able to identify the key activities on a technical level. Uh, we also identified the lessons learned from different perspectives, so management process and technical perspective, and the impacts and benefits into the design process. So for example, we were able to uh, deliver a better product at the end, but also reducing some of the steps of our design process and then uh, eliminating some waste of our process. It supported then the formalization of some hid hidden steps, identification of flows, and alignment with international standards. And with that process, like process map exercise, we identify 18 steps, uh, which could basically be summarized in these five main areas. Starting with the kickoff meetings and strategy definition, geo-referencing, geo BIM to GS transformation, geo-BIM process, and the app creation for the users. So the main challenge. Uh, the first one could be related to creating and publishing the apps due to the complexity of the interface, but also the number of steps required to do it. Uh, the partial adopt adoption of some functionalities, for example, the um, uh, scheduling tool uh, that did not consider the project complexity and the reoccurrence of activities in that project. Uh, the technical user interface, which is b uh, basically related to the previous ones as well, but uh, it was uh, a bit difficult to understand the interface. Uh, the setup required and the early communication uh, between the BIM and GIS teams, and the common data environment integration. So basically these platforms that we try here was not able to be integrated with plat uh, CDE platforms from other vendors, software vendors, for example. And this is a huge limitation when we are talking about Open Beam. Uh, the key lessons learned, I think this is related and very important to this case study, but to all the other presentations that we are seeing. So we need to better understand the purpose of why we are implementing that, the users and the requirements needed. So more or less data will be required depending on that, and more or less functionalities will be used as well. And we need to have that identified early in the process. Uh, the planning and concept design stage were uh, found, to, uh, found to be the most uh, beneficial stage to adopt this uh, platform. Uh, from, so this was identified by the team uh, that was implementing, due to the uh, level of information need. And as I mentioned, the early communication and planning was also a lesson learned. Briefly talking about the benefits, they are divided into four main categories, and at, in the background you can see some uh, uh, images and uh, video from the Belgian case study. 
So the first benefit was related to the information management and data integration. So we were able to have the single source of data and the users were able to access uh, previously disconnected uh, information. The integration with all other documents, documents, PDF files and images. And also it was quite easy to have the maintenance of that source of information because it was using links. And that uh, was, was avoiding duplication of information and also avoiding design errors. Second, about collaboration and communication, which I'm not covering as I just mentioned before. The visualization, so it was, it is available in the web browser, so we don't need to install any software and that's quite, ooh, apologize. <laughs> that's quite good when we can, when we want to have the engagement from uh, all the stakeholders in a project, for example, the client, so that was very useful. Just let me go back. Um, and then all, all the stakeholders were able to see the information in a very easy way and used for different purposes, different meetings, all types of, uh, information were located and available and you can even see the figure here so we had PDF inspection reports but also pictures from the field there and located in the model which was re really really useful and final uh, benefit related to optioneering so we were basically able to duplicate the models and uh, we were saving a lot of time for our design team but also for the client as we were able to show and demonstrate how that type of building uh, could be in different locations and rotations as well, etc. So we found out with these case studies that, that a lack, lack of clarity related to the key modes of collaboration could affect some of the design aspects, like the design quality. One of the key modes that we identify here was these both GIS and BIM are equally involved because GIS provided a, uh, data easy, accessible, and integrated data through this web app, and the BIM contributed with well-defined data as well. Uh, as I mentioned, a clear integration strategy is really important in the early stages, and for that uh, we are arguing that uh, this could be achieved through a GeoBIM execution plan that could cover key requirements, uh, responsibilities, modes of collaboration, etc. And this could also be included in the main map if needed. So we are not saying that we need to start duplicating or etc. But this could be included in the main map as an extension or uh, an appendix, even more when a beam is leading that kind of integration. Mapping the process was quite useful and uh, proven to be very effective. So uh, practitioners should not overlook the process design and improvement side of the integration. Uh, just to finalize, so key, key contributions of the paper are related to outlining the benefits, challenges, and lessons learned for, uh, from this uh, integration from a management, technical, and process perspective. Uh, but we do argue that we need to further investigate the requirements and content of a GBAP document and further explore this GeoBeam integration in different levels uh, in the industry. And efforts in quantifying the, the benefits would be really useful for the business case of the integration. With that, I finalize my presentation, and I really would like to thank you for the attention.